Hey guys, I just got back from Rockford, Illinois um, to pick up this eBay purchase. I drove like a maniac. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, so I know virtually nothing about this. I know as much about it as you do right now because the seller only posted one photo basically from this angle, which I shared on my community tab on my YouTube page a while ago. Um, and, uh, well, let me explain what's going on here. So, I acquired a Radiola 60 a few months back um, at the Antique Radio Club of Illinois swap meet. It was in the donation area. Uh, I got it for $5, I think. Um, it was in rough shape. I spent several months, months um, repairing and refinishing the cabinet. That's basically done. But uh, the chassis are in rough shape because, well, age, but also it looks like uh, mice had been in there and um, their droppings corroded the upper surface and they chewed some of the wiring. Uh, so not only is it in rough shape, but not the most pleasant thing to work on. So I put it on the back burner. Uh, some of you were encouraging me to just dive into it or get on with it and uh, just start rewiring it and stripping the rust and tearing it all apart. I could have, but uh, experience has taught me uh, how much work that would be to do. If you want to see that kind of a tear down and rebuild, I did it for a similar Brunswick 5KR a few years back in the old apartment and it took weeks. I uh, used acid, uh, the, the pitting was so bad it went right through the metal in some areas. I filled in the pitting with Bondo, primed it, repainted it. Uh, of course I tore everything apart to get it, all the corrosion. And it turned out fine. Um, I would rather not do that again if I don't have to. Radiola 60s are not uh, rare. Um, in fact, probably at any given point in uh, time, uh, there's half a dozen on eBay. But they are big, they are heavy. So they typically sell one in good condition, complete, a couple hundred bucks, maybe more, and then shipping be another hundred dollars depending on where it's at. So um, I'll just get to it. Somebody was selling one on eBay, local driving distance for me, for $39. Complete, nice set of tubes, so I, I picked it up. So as for why was he selling it, where's the rest of it? Well, his wife insisted that he repurpose the cabinet. So he's painting it to make something out of it, maybe a knick-knack box, or I don't know. But hey, I thanked him for saving the electronics. He was hoping that somebody could make use of it. I don't think he was crazy about the idea of tearing it apart, but that's what she wanted, so that's what she's getting. So, uh, this is all I know. Uh, it looks to be in fine condition. Let's take a closer look here. Um, fine layer of dirt on it, but I am not seeing any corrosion whatsoever. It looks like the previous owner did a really careful job of taking it out of the cabinet. Might have been a little easier if he had disconnected the two chassis from each other, but I don't think he was very well versed. And I take one of these apart. And hey, hey <laughs> how many people are? Uh, but he did put it into a plastic tub, which he let me keep, which was very thoughtful of him. So I think all I did was take the screws out from underneath the chassis and just take them out and plop them into a, a tub. Uh, one thing that jumped right out, out at me right away when I saw these tubes is that. Uh, a number of them are globe, including one blue Arcturus, which is a uh, it's type 27. And it looks like we have a globe 71A, which is nice, yes. It very well be the original RCA Radiotron UX 171A. Very nice. Would have been cool if the 80 rectifier was a globe, but hey. I'm going to complain. Uh, Alright, so now that I'm really getting in here and looking at it, um, yeah, boy, there. 
There is no corrosion on this. Paint is in excellent condition. I think just a little bit of cleaning and this will look fantastic. So, now that leaves the big question of what the heck is going on underneath. Let's see, there are shafts on this side, so I'm going to tip it towards the camera. Well, the original, well, maybe the original power cord, although it's quite a bit shorter now, but it has the acorn plug on the end. Or not acorn, but big light. Non polarized. This scrap of wire would be the antenna. Um, well, it looks good. <laughs> Let me get the camera off the tripod. Or how about I just turn the tripod around? Yeah, boy, this uh, looks really, really, really clean. Looks all original too. I'm gonna grab uh, the other chassis, this chassis, the one I have. Let's compare the two. Here are the two receiver chassis side by side. This is the one I already had. This is the one I just picked up. At first blush, they look very similar, but. Uh, upon closer inspection, you can see this one is in much better condition. This one has a lot of corrosion on top, but even on the bottom you can see it. it's corroded here, on the bottom of that capacitor. And of course this has wiring chewed through in a number of spots from rodents. But I'm seeing some other differences too, like this has a silk screen, looks like EF on each one of these boxes, and this does not, I think there's coils inside there. Uh, some subtle things. Not just insulation shoot away. I was going to say this wire looks different. That's because the insulation's gone, whereas this one still has it. Um, this pot metal looks a little different. And that's one thing I'm curious about. Cause, uh, I have a friend who's working on one of these, and on his, this it's a braided uh, bronze dial cord. Um, his is missing or broke. And uh, the pot metal on his is in, it's got, it has cracks on it and it's epoxied together. Both of these look to be in good shape, but they're a little bit different color. Now, maybe this was just around a heavy smoker. I don't know, but this looks a little bit different. Uh, it works though, it's intact. And uh, I think the dial scale's intact, it's cracked on this one. And you can see some of that nasty corrosion too. I did not get the knobs. I uh, actually don't even think to ask about them, but I, I, I have a set. Uh, I think he was keeping the escutcheons as well, but oh well. Uh, so this has cadmium corrosion on it too. Whereas this does not for some reason. So I believe when it's yellowish, that's cadmium sulfate or sulfide. Uh, let me clean that off. And as far as the power supply goes, it looks to be mint. <laughs> I was a little lost for words there. I'm not used to seeing wiring being the original color so, so prominently. If you go back, I actually have two of these already. This is the third one I have. The other two on varying conditions, but you cannot see the wire, the color of the wires like this. That's brilliant. And that's handy because they refer to the color of the wires in the service info. Now, what I'm really curious about is, does it work? Maybe thinking, hey, something as old as this, which I think is 1929, it couldn't possibly work. The capacitors have to be shot. Maybe not. So this, this does not use electrolytic capacitors. They are uh, metal foil and, um, and wax, uh, and I suppose some kind of paper. And that's what's inside, I believe, this box. I've taken one of them apart when I did the Brunswick, and uh, they're huge. Uh, something like two microfarad, there's a couple two microfarad and a one microfarad, and uh, several smaller values. 
most of the B plus filtering is done by huge chokes. So we have three huge metal boxes. One is the power transformer, one is filter chokes, and an output transformer, and the other is uh, uh, capacitors. I have heard it's not all that unusual for these to work to some extent, as is. There are no paper caps. Well, there's no paper caps. I suppose whatever is in there and there is in some early form of paper cap. The rest of these are some early type of mica capacitor. And then we have dog bone resistors, which are probably way off in value. So I'm not saying it would work great, but I'm saying it might be possible to turn it on and get something and not have it go up in smoke. So, what do we need to do that? Well, we need a good set of tubes. We need a better power cord than that. And we need... Uh, oh, you must have got the power switch too. We need a power switch. Looks like that's been spliced in, so perhaps the power switch is replaced at some point. We can take care of that. Um, and then we need a speaker of some sorts. I think my 5KR, yeah, I can see my 5KR speaker. That will work just fine. Um, it plugs into a couple pins on the back of this chassis. So let's get to it. Let's um, patch up the wiring. Uh, I want to check all the tubes too because of wall. I want to know if those globe tubes are good. Because those are those are nice to have. Um, and uh, let's see if we can fire this thing up. Oh, also nice of him to include all the original screws. It looks like we're just missing one. But I do need to be careful of whatever I set this down on. If I slide it around, these are going to gouge the heck out of it. So, uh, something to be aware of. Also looks like this bent. Um, probably from having the two wired together, some strain was put on this wiring harness and bent this over. But it shouldn't be too hard to bend it back. Let's hope none of these wires broke. And this thing flopping around down here is the dial lamp. Which also got a little discombobulated. Uh, but before we do that, let's compare the uh, power supply chassis. So, I think you can see what I mean about the color of the wiring be, being so vibrant on this one compared to that one. Also, I realized I was mistaken about where the speaker plugs in. The speaker plugs into these two jacks here. So, well, what a difference. And again, I'm so glad that I set up a search on eBay and just bided my time until one showed up in my area because uh, that's such a treat to have this. Now, of course, these nasty ones, I will keep for spare parts and just hang on to them as is. Uh, so um, I'm hoping to help somebody out already with some of the uh, dial mechanism off of that guy. First up, I'm doing a little basic cleaning, and while doing that, reviewing everything, making sure everything looks okay. Started out with just a microfiber cloth to dust it, and then moved up to some Windex. And we are deep into flavor country. I cleaned off one of the tubes, and yeah, it, <laughs> it smells like cigarettes, cigars, whatnot. At least the residue that's coming off does. So, uh, once again, I think we have a case of... Ah, good old uh, nicotine, cigar, whatnot, byproducts, preserving uh, some vintage electronics. As far as what will I clean this with afterwards, I mean, you know, once I've got it working and all that, um, I'm thinking some auto products, Maybe just a light waxing. This uh, tube shield does come off, which will help me get down in here. Uh, I lubed up the tuning mechanism, and that's working very, very nicely. Although this is made out of pot metal, supposedly, um, neither one of my examples of this has any issues whatsoever. Pot metal is a term for sort of a random alloy, 
zinc, aluminum, tin, whatever they had, kind of scraps lying around, they melted down and put into a mold. And depending on the composition, I think primarily it's the zinc, or sorry, the tin that's a problem. Because tin can do weird things like form whiskers and whatnot that the, the alloy can start sp cracking apart over time. But hey, I'll, I'll take it. But I think that accounts for kind of the odd color on some of the stuff is uh, this is all tinged with uh, a bit of uh, nicotine byproducts. That being said, some of this is actually really bronze, brass, whatnot, so it's not like this, this, these plates I believe are brass. So it's not like they're aluminum and it's tinted that heavily, it's just a little bit of a, a tinge to it. Alrighty, I have things set up for a test. I simply twisted the ends with the power switch, uh, so it's twisted the ends together with the power switch had been plugged in a speaker. I went with the original power cord. I figured it was a good enough shape just for a test. So here we go. Uh, well, this thing about these tubes, they do uh, light up fast. Directly heated, I believe. The 80 doesn't look to be red plating or anything. We're drawing about one and a quarter amps. Every tube is illuminated. Pilot light's not lit, but I kind of thought that might be the case. All right, so let's uh, see what we can do here. All right, a few changes. One, I swapped out a bunch of the tubes for known good ones. Also brought out my rough generator. Uh, I modulated and I hooked up a longer antenna. Uh, for now, I'm just going to put these next to each other. I have the RF generator on max output. Let's see if any of that made a difference. There's a bit of a sound out of the speaker when it first turns on. So we know it's doing something. Or that there's some power. The volume control feels a little weird, so I suspect that might not be good. Yeah, we're getting absolutely nothing. I was just uh, changing the, um, uh, I was switching the uh, line uh, range, there's a switch on this for, was such, you have two options, like for a lower or higher input line voltage, I think it might have been dirty, it wasn't making contact. 10 year old oh. period, he has now collected 19 <laughs> straight gauge with well, him. Three models. When you do the math, you'll choose McGrath. Well, I guess we're done with this project. <laughs> it's changing because I'm, I'm, I'm going near the antenna. I don't think this has automatic volume control. I suspect we have some dirty contacts somewhere because it's kind of popping in and out. It's actually just too much gain. Go back to the shorter antenna and it's still, the station is booming. This was the volume almost all the way down. Now I look at all the volume control on this works. I don't quite remember. Some of them work where the antenna input goes to the rheostat and goes to ground. So you're actually varying the RF into the front end of the radio. 
I think that might be the case in this, in which case you probably really do need to ground this to get proper volume control. Because this volume control is not... It's squirrely. One, help it up. Wow. And some of these stations are too loud to even listen to. It's 9.59. That's amazing with an antenna that's just about three feet long and I'm in the basement. This thing isn't grounded. And of course, it's on all the original parts, sands, a few tubes. Now it does seem like we're just getting in one or two stations really strong and the rest of the dial is, is fairly silent. Good, I was hoping to get that station, and I'll show you why in a moment. It's because on Saturday nights, at least the last time I tuned it in, they broadcast old-time radio programs. So it'll be fun to listen to. Now, I was actually kind of hoping this wouldn't work, because I still have to touch some of these tubes. It still has a couple of the tubes it came with. Um, but assuming I can get this working fairly well on these original parts, what do we do? This is a weaker station playing some music. So, I was saying, what do we do now? Well, uh, what I mean is, I'm um, assuming I can get it to work even better with just a little tweaking. Do I tear this apart and restuff the capacitors? to make it mm, more reliable uh, or leave it all original. Um, I've heard guys say they just run it uh, on the original parts. So we can make it a little bit safer. We can add a fuse, maybe a thermistor. I can run it on a step-down transformer. Although this um, is rated for up to 125 volts AC operation if you throw that primary switch in the position that I have it in right now. Um, See, the original paint's in really good shape. <laughs> That's the problem with getting something really pristine is uh, if I take this apart to restuff it, I'm going to damage it. I have to bend over tabs to pry these boxes open and get them off the sub-chassis. Paint is going to chip. Metal's going to get fatigued. Some of the tabs might break off. It's going to be a destructive process. Could I disconnect the wires to this and stuff some new caps underneath? Maybe. There's not a whole lot of room, but modern caps being much smaller, maybe. I'd like to use pure plastic film, because this used non-polarized uh, paper-type caps. A 2 microfarad, say 630 volt plastic film cap, they're a little beefy, it might not quite fit. But assuming they did, that's a possibility. At least uh, from the top it would look all original, but down below it would also be kind of destructive. Or even if I can't get it to work that well, do I value originality, 100% originality, or close to it, over it working as good as it possibly can, being as reliable as it possibly can? I guess part of that depends on what am I going to do with it. Am I going to listen to this all day, every day? No. Am I going to fire it up now and then for visitors to show off? Yes. Could I make that safe enough again with a fuse and a step-down transformer and leave the, it all original? Probably. 
Probably. Um, I'll tell you what. Um, I'm going to post my findings on the Antique Radio Forum and elicit the opinions of those who know more than I do. Because I know I've seen people post that say that they have been running these on all original parts, but I want to ask you to throw a wide open and say, hey, has anybody tried that and run into problems? Did the, did the power transformer melt down because they stepped out of the room and something shorted or anything horrific happened? I'll tell you, I, I really n am not inclined to tear this thing apart and replace all the uh, all the caps and uh, replace all the resistors. I'm gonna, some of these are unusual looking parts. I can't restuff them. It's just it'll be a destructive process again. And uh, it's so nice looking and so pristine, and it basically works. I really don't want to do anything to it other than clean it up a little bit. I remembered my overhead shop light kicks out a lot of RF noise, so I turned that off, and it's sounding a lot better. And that's with the U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. So this is using a uh, Brunswick speaker. It's a high impedance uh, reed or I guess needle type speaker they call them. I think. Now I did also pick up an RCA 106 uh, loudspeaker. It's one of the first um, field coil type speakers. Uh, I will unveil it soon and we'll of course have to try it with this. Uh, next up I'm going to test all the tubes that came with this and let's weed out the bad ones and put as many of those globe tubes in here as we can. Hopefully I can get a full set. <laughs> Also, I realize when I put my hand on the volume control, it kills the volume. If I don't have a knob on there, I'm touching the metal shaft, which I'm sure is shorting out some of the RF energy that's coming in. But hey, I gotta say, that sounds really good for what it is. Uh, and it has plenty of volume. These early speakers do have a limited uh, frequency response range. That's why I say for what it is, it sounds awfully good. Also notice the current draw has now dropped to 0.65 amps. It dropped by about 40% when I was fiddling with that switch. So something was not happy with the way I, it was configured when I first turned it on. Alright, let's check those tubes. I'm having pretty good luck with the tubes so far, but I've noticed that the filament characteristics are definitely different between some of them. You guys probably noticed that too, that some of them glow really bright. And those take a long time to warm up. And some of them are quite dim. Let's check this out. All of these are RCA Radiotron UY227s. But the construction inside whoa, <laughs> is considerably different. They were definitely tinkering with the design. These are all the same tube. But the structures inside are considerably different. I know it's some tubes like the 24. There's a 24A and the A has a, a different type of filament. But with the 27s, they just, they're all the same number, 227. The two is, that um, indicates the manufacturer. They're really, it's all type 27. The two is for RCA. A 327, the three would be Cunningham, I believe. Uh, so, yeah, they've all tested good so far, including that uh, Blue Arcturus. This is kind of wild, too. They did use different types of getter material in the early days, I, I become aware. And this, this looks different than anything I've seen before, where on the back side it's very white. But very silvery on the other side. Not sure that could be because it's picked up some contamination, but I'm used to the getter being kind of silvery blackish. 
on the inside not all white like that. And I believe this is the guy that was dead. So let's see. Now with these, the ST types, the shoulder types, these are again 27s, but these definitely the filaments are very hard to see when they glow. Yeah, I think this is the dead one. I'm not seeing anything at all. Let's try a different one for comparison. Jeez, I'm not seeing this. Oh yeah, it's there. So it's glowing. It's a really tiny, faint orange light on top. But it's definitely glowing. Where is that? Yeah. So I guess this is the only one that's for sure is a dud so far. I finished testing all the tubes. Only two were bad. Uh, this had an open filament and this one has a short. So by combining both sets, I have almost all globe tubes. Uh, all RCA, with the exception of the Blue Arcturus, and uh, that is an RCA, but it's not a globe. So, if I dig through my status, I think I could pull out two more RCA uh, 227 globes to replace these two if I really want to be authentic. All right, let's give this one more try with all these tubes in there. And notice the different glowing characteristics. They're all UI-227s, but clearly some of them have a very bright filament, some very dull, some warm up faster than others. Remember this is the blue tube, it doesn't look so blue when you're in the dim lighting. The filament's kind of whitish. It's not working anymore. Yeah, but some of the guys ah, that, I put out, like that, like Dan Wetzel, who is uh, lead writer. There we go. Just didn't have to turn it up loud enough. Cool. We'll be back in just a moment. But now, here's your Rexall family druggist speaking as another stand-in for Santa Claus. Yes, friends, there are 10,000 such stand-ins for Santa this week. 10,000 independent Rexall druggists who are ready, willing, and able to take the rush and worry out of your last-minute Christmas shopping. You see, we've seen to it that our stores are filled with beautiful, distinctive, sure-to-please gifts. For the home, for the children, for the entire family. Alright, so as I say now, I have a decision to make. Um, what do I want to do with all this? Couldn't be happier that it's working uh, and, and a great set of tubes. But, uh, yeah, now I need to decide do I want to do anything or just go with it as it is. Uh, what I will do is, on uh, the next installment, get out the RCA 106 loudspeaker make sure it is safe and try hooking it up to this and let's hear what it sounds like with a speaker with more power and a wider dynamic range that's going to be it for now hope you enjoyed this look at a new a very very nice condition radio 60 chassis go go Go.